Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I'll be going over some players that absolutely balled out in the Washington Commanders week one win against the Arizona Cardinals and some guys that didn't play too well. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and that notification bell as well. It really does help out the channel. We're a few away from 11,400 so please help me get there. It takes a couple seconds. Always good to talk to you guys on a victory Monday. The Washington Commanders are 1-0 and tied for the you know for first place in the NFC East with the Eagles and Cowboys and the Giants just, you know, they lost 40 to 0. It was ugly, so things could be a lot worse and there are a lot of players that played well. We're going to talk about that and some guys that maybe their stock went down. So this is like a stock up, stock down video. One guy that absolutely balled out is Montez Sweat. One and a half sacks, a forced fumble, Two tackles for loss. I mean, he was just an absolute beast. You look, I mean, basically JP Finley did list out this, you know, stat sheet. But if we wanted to go into the full thing right here, let's see where it is. Where is it? So he had five tackles, talked about the rest, and had a QB hit as well. He was dominant. He forced a turnover, which is really, really crucial. That really helped us. That I feel like that play helped turn the momentum. So I think he was the MVP of the game on both sides of the ball, you know, and both teams. He was just a beast and he's earning that contract ex like extension. Like he's trying to get that. And if he plays like he did today, he's going to get paid and he's going to get paid by the commanders, I think. And this isn't, you know, it doesn't matter too much because I think Chase and Montez could get paid, but you know, it's not amazing for Chase, but it is what it is, but yeah, Montez Sweat, you don't need to you know do much of an explanation there. He was an absolute beast yesterday. Another guy was Jonathan Allen. Four pressures, two QB hits, a sack. His PFF grade was 90.2, I think. Montez was like 86, and he was first in pass rush win rate amongst all defensive tackles. So he was he, he was basically the best defensive tackle this week. I mean, Jalen Carter was also really good. He had a sack and had a bunch of pressures, but Jonathan Allen was an absolute beast, good in the run game and good in, you know, yeah, rushing the passer as well. He was an absolute beast, got that sack in the fourth quarter, you know, to really help us and him, Payne, I mean, Payne had a good game as well. Didn't do as well as you know, Allen and Sweat, but he also contributed, had some nice stops in the run game. And you look at Allen, you know, yeah, there's Payne. He had two tackles for loss. But you look at Allen right here. Where is he? I'm trying to find him. There we go. Three tackles, three solos, a sack, two tackles for loss, and three QB hits. Like, that really is huge. I mean, I guess PFF has him with two QB hits, but that's besides the point. Our defensive line really won us this game and the offense did end up scoring a couple of touchdowns overall but it would have been hard to win this game without the defense it really would have been they wouldn't have if they would have had like an average defense the defense saved them today or yesterday and hopefully going forward they continue to ball out but also the offense balls out as well but Duran Payne Jonathan Allen and Montez Sweat were all very good. Another, you know, kind of tandem that was pretty good was Cam Curl and Derek Forrest. Cam Curl, he didn't make any like interceptions. He almost did in the, you know, when the Cardinals were in the red zone. He kind of dropped one, but it, it was, you know, kind of tough. He had 10 total tackles, eight solo tackles, also had a tackle for loss. So typical Cam Curl type performance. He's playing for extension. He's not getting paid a lot of money, so he needs to do what he, you know, can do to get. A contract extension whether it's here or just another contract with another team but he looked good I thought Derek Forrest his tackling was very very good for the commanders you know he didn't miss a lot of tackles and did he make any he didn't really break up any passes but I just thought his tackling was good and then Percy Butler I don't know if he gets a game ball I didn't watch the film so I can't really tell on coverage but he gets at least a hat tip I mean he made that he got B off the line but then recovered used his recovery speed and broke up the pass. Probably should have intercepted that one for sure. And then just made some good plays overall. I thought Percy Butler, you know, he deserves a hat tip. And I think a lot of the other guys like on the defensive line, like Abdullah Anderson had half a sack, a tackle for loss, QB hit. He deserves a hat tip. I think, you know, go ahead and give Casey Tool a tap hit or a cap hit. 
Uh, you know, he had, what, three tackles, a tackle for loss, and then James Smith-Williams as well. He had a QB hit and three tackles. So, you know, give those guys their prop. The whole defense overall played really well. I think Kendall Fuller had a good game as well. Emmanuel Forbes and Benjamin St. Juice were solid. Like, the whole secondary was pretty good. I think a lot of the times when players were getting beat, it was some of the linebackers. But, I mean, look at this. They got 132 receiving yards. So, it's not like they had a ton of receiving yards. So, like, the secondary played really, really well, and so did the D-line. The, you know, the biggest issue is probably the linebackers, and even them, they didn't play terribly. I mean, they only scored nine points on us, guys. So, the defense as a whole, everyone at least gets, you know, hat tip, basically. Let's go on to another hat tip, Curtis Samuel. I mean, he had five catches for 54 yards, also had a rush for 60 yards. He, or for six yards, he had a total of 60 yards on the day, had a clutch catch, in, you know, at the end of the second half to really get the commanders into field goal range. And they could have made, maybe got a touchdown there, but, you know, they didn't have enough time. And, you know, they had one play and Sam Howell threw it away, which was smart. But Curtis Samuel had a good day. And hopefully, you know, he continues to do that. And then Jahan and Terry have a little bit bigger days, you know, the next couple of days. So let's see. I'm missing one guy. Let's see. Where is it? I had the grab. Okay, there we go. Tressway and Jeremy Reeves were absolutely amazing in this game against the Arizona Cardinals. Tressway overall, like his punting numbers were good. They weren't like amazing. If you look at it, let's go ahead and see. I think it was five for 266. Let's see, or six for 266, average 44.3, three inside the 20. He had a 60 yard punt. And he also though saved us on a field goal when Cameron Cheeseman had a really bad snap that skidded off the turf, Tressway clutches up, you know, places it down just in time, but it did mess up Joey Sly a little bit because the timing was a little off, but Joey Sly, shout out to him. He doesn't get a game ball, but he gets a hat tip for, you know, going four for four on the day, you know, extra points and field goals combined. He did what he had to do. He didn't make any mistakes. If he would have missed one, that would have been bad because, hey, it was all, you know, 35 yards and within but Tressway had some good punts and then that hold itself gives you a game ball and then Jeremy Reeves I think he had three total tackles his coverage was outstanding he didn't play any defensive snaps but he played every special team snap and he was a stud he you know made a ton of nice tackles and let's see yeah three three total tackles two solo tackles so he was really good on special teams and I just think that you know, he just needed a shout out for that all pro Revo for a reason. He's probably going to get back to back years with an all pro selection. And then besides that, I'll give some hat tips. You know, Cole Turner, he didn't play amazing, but he only had one target on the day or two targets and he had one catch for 17 yards. So Cole Turner had a very solid game. And then Brian Robinson gets a hat tip. You know, he wasn't very efficient, but had 60 total yards, had a touchdown as well. So he gets some props. And then, you know, Charles Leno and Sam Cosme grayed out pretty well on PFF. So maybe them, PFF, again, you got to take it with a grain of salt. And I don't really, I, I haven't been able to watch the film, but those are kind of all the guys I think played well and deserve a hat tip. And real quick, we're going to get into the guys that stocked down or didn't play well in a second. But real quick, a word from our sponsor. And a huge shout out to BetUS for sponsoring this video. BetUS is leading online sports betting company. And the NFL season and college football season is now underway. So you can make bets on all those you know, NFL games. There's a Monday night game today with the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. That's going to be a great game, and you can bet on that. You can bet on basketball, which is coming up pretty soon, baseball, which the playoffs are coming up, and then hockey. Anything you want, they have, and you can use my link in the description to get 125% first-time deposit match. So if you put in 100, you'll get 225 dollars back. It is a very, very good deal. And it'll just gives you it gives you some money to play around with. And the Commanders they're playing again against the Broncos this next week. If you want to go ahead and put money on that, use my link in the description and bet responsibly. Okay, so let's go over some guys that maybe their stock went a little bit down. Antonio Gibson, not a little bit, it went down a lot. Three carries, nine yards, but a fumble inside our red zone or inside the red zone. So can't have that. Can't have fumbles. And there's really no great time for a fumble, but 
inside your own 20 or in the opposing you know 20 in the you know red zone is just not a good time at all to fumble you lost a minimum of three points probably more because they were rolling on that drive and they were pretty good in the red zone this game besides like i think the last put one of the last possessions they were in the red zone but they weren't really trying to score which was frustrating to me that eric bianami ran it on third and six but gibson stock definitely goes down after that performance Logan Thomas, I honestly think he had the one of the worst performances out of anyone. I know he had his, you know, box, you know, score stats is fine, four catches for 43 yards, but he got targeted eight times and every single one of those targets, he probably should have cat, you know, caught. Maybe one of them was a little bit tough and there was a couple actually that were like maybe difficult, but you probably should have cat caught it. And if he would have caught 7 out of the 8, that would have been fine because again, you don't expect him to make every you know, somewhat difficult catch, but he should have, you know, played better. That was just too many drops at unfortunate situations. And yeah, that was just really, really frustrating. So I hope he either, I'll give him another week or two, but after that, and even if he starts playing better, I think you got to transition Cole Turner to get more targets. So maybe next week you give Logan Thomas four targets, give like two or three of his targets to Terry and then one or two to Cole Turner to give Cole Turner like three, four targets in the game. And then, you know, Brian Robinson, whatever. I think you, you got to pass a little bit more than 29 times. Rushing, how many times did they run? They ran 28 times, which is, you know, that's fine. You know, you'd like them to be a little bit more efficient. And then obviously Gibson's probably not going to get these carries. Maybe he'll go to Rodriguez or maybe they'll run it less. I don't know. Gibson stock went down. Logan Thomas as well needs to play better for sure. And those are like the main ones. Sadiq Charles also got beat a couple times and had a penalty or two. So I would say stock down a little bit for him. John Bates had two penalties. One was ridiculous. He was just running his route and they called a penalty on him, offensive pass interference. And Logan Thompson actually made a good play on that, you know, play. But so John Bates, I I wouldn't say, I would say slight stock down, even though one of the penalties wasn't really his fault. But besides that, didn't really see what he had to do. And then on defense, like, I really don't know without watching the film. Like, Jamin Davis, maybe. I, I mean, I don't think. I thought he played pretty well. But he, I, for some reason, they only played him 65% of the snaps, which is interesting for sure. Because someone says, oh, like, Cody Barton was playing the mic. So that's why he's playing 100%. And I get that. But, like, last year, Jamin Davis sometimes was the only linebacker you know, playing for Washington, he played 100% of the snaps. So definitely not stocked down from him in terms of performance. I thought he played fine, but just something to monitor. And then Quan Martin, I would say stocked down for him, had a penalty on special teams, got evaluated for concussion. I don't know if he ended up with a concussion and he played zero defensive snaps. That is like not good at all. For your second round pick, And I think I keep saying this, he can be a good player eventually, but for your second round pick, you expect him to play year one and be a contributor and not just a contributor, like a starter. And at the very least a contributor, but usually you want your second round pick to start. That is starting to turn into a situation. And I said after watching him in the preseason, he wasn't ready, but zero snaps. And, and they do have a you know, deep safety room with Derek Forrest, Percy Butler, Cam Curl. You even got Jeremy Reeves in there who's probably playing over Quan Martin, but I don't know. It's a little bit concerning and we'll see what happens there. Besides that, no real like definitive stock down. Like I thought, you know, they said Leno played fine. Wiley, I think his grade was okay. And yeah, that's really it. I might be, I mean, and you could say Sam Howell stocked down a little bit considering what his expectations were. But if you like, you can't throw away plays in football, but that fumble was so bad. And besides that, he was still not great, but that play really put his stock down more than any other play took you know held onto the ball a little bit too long i'm not out on sam howell let's see you know give him a you know a couple more weeks see how he does before we really really judge him this is his second nfl start so he didn't play well or he didn't play amazing but he got banged up i don't know if he after he got hit by kaiser white which is a dirty play if he was ever really the same after that if he got concussed probably not because i would have come out but he, I feel better about him in the next couple weeks. I think, you know, his stats, those turnovers were bad, but they were, one of them was unlucky with the tip and the other one was just bad. And I don't think that'll ever happen again, but that's kind of it on today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new and peace.